It's time for this week's episode of Brandon Sports Talk, featuring in-depth interviews from those who are trending in the world of athletics. And now, here's the host of Brandon Sports Talk, Brandon Pate. Welcome back to Brandon Sports Talk. In today's episode, I have the privilege to interview the Brock University head women's soccer coach, John DePasquarely. How are you doing today? I'm doing excellent, Brandon. Great to have you. Uh, great to be here, and uh, thanks for having me. Thank you. Can you talk about how you knew that you wanted to co coach in college? Uh, that's you know that, that's a great question. So I've been uh, uh, actually, but prior to prior to this, I was a high school teacher for 31 years, and um, kind of in, in between that, I coached at all levels from uh, you know obviously the, the toddlers all the way up to. Uh, to, to the university and even uh, dabbled a bit in the pro pro game, pro game here in uh, Canada, but uh, it's always been something that I've wanted to do. And I think uh, it was the late nineties, early two thousands, I actually got an opportunity to, I had two opportunities, one at uh, Niagara university, uh, which is a division one school um, in the NCAA and also McMaster university with the women's team. Um, I think that was, mid nineties. So I, I knew, I knew that I, it was something I really wanted to do, but uh, I became so busy and so entrenched with the other things I was doing. And, and obviously um, I, I became comfortable with, with, with the teaching salary and, and all the benefits, et cetera. So uh, it was something that the, the opportunity was there, but it just, it, the fit wasn't. So um, what happened was I did retire full-time in uh, 2019 from, from teaching and uh, my really good buddy, Lucho Inero, who uh, was the men's coach at Brock University, asked me if I wanted to come on board as a lead assistant. And I'd been, uh, at, I guess I was a, a guest coach a few times with the guys, and I, I, I knew the majority of the team, and it was, it was awesome. So um, I gladly accepted, and, and I jumped in both feet, got into the recruiting, uh, planning sessions, long-term, et cetera, et cetera. So... We started off in uh, uh, 2019, and it was great. It was him and I and uh, Eric Van Wissen, and off we went. And we were two games into the season, and the women's head coach at the time had to take a leave uh, because he had major conflicts with a business he was starting. So the university was in a bit of a bind, so they asked Luch if, if he would help out by being kind of the coach of both the women and the men. And uh, so he asked if I would help out. So between the two of us, we kind of – bounce between both and we had a great year uh, uh the men's team went to the oua semifinals and lost a heartbreaker to guelph the women made the playoff for something like the second time in the entire program's existence um and then they lost an early round game i think it was one nothing but everybody was coming back in both programs and there was a big buzz about things and uh, we were pretty excited so we uh, subsequently planned a trip for uh, a tour for tour of Italy for both programs. Uh, we fundraised, we we're ready to go. It was outstanding. We we're really happy. And then of course, uh, 2020 approaches and COVID and it, it shut that down, but it was, it was really interesting because shortly after we kept, you know, we're doing the online workouts and everything via zoom and any other, any other uh, Avenue we, we, we could keeping in touch with people. And as you know, uh, that kind of dark period set in and, and, and we were out of touch for about a year and a half with these athletes. When the dust settled with the women's program, um, we were given the green light in July of this year to kind of get started again. Um, the club teams were going full time, but the university, particularly the U Sports and OUA, which are our governing bodies, took a real and a wise caution approach to it. So we got together and then we realized, you know, uh, the majority of those players weren't coming back. So again, I, I use the term when the dust settled on everything we had of, of our roster of 23, we had three players that actually had uh, any U sports experience whatsoever on that women's team. Um, and then unfortunately, Luch took a, a sabbatical, took some time off right at the start. So I was kind of left, you know, I was asked, would you take the, the program? I said, absolutely. So in the very beginning, it was alone. So I built a, a really nice uh, coaching staff um, and, and off we went. It was, uh, it, it, and we were starting basically from scratch, 12, 12 freshmen. Um, 
and, you know, very, very little experience, but we had a real wonderful group of athletes and a strong support cast around the school. So it was good. That's so amazing. How has your professional playing time helped you in your coaching time? Another great question. So, um, I, I, so I played, I played, um, so when I was, I, I was really fortunate. I grew up in a small town and, uh, but we were, oh. that, that particular team was very successful. So, um, we became kind of a high profile team. So I, I, I actually Lucho and Arrow, who I mentioned earlier, and I both came from this kind of small town, small program. And we we're scouted oh. because the team went to the provincial championships. So we were scouted to be part of the provincial program and then on to the, uh, national youth program, which then uh, we were able to compete in the, um, uh, in, in the world youth youth cup in 1984, which, uh, which was in the old USSR, which, which is now Russia and Minsk. So again, we, we traveled the world before we were 18 or 19 years of age. We, we were able to see uh, basically the four corners of the world and met a lot of great people. Uh, we were, we, we had some pretty amazing coaches. And then from that point, um, as you may or may not know, the North American soccer league, which was, uh, it really peaked around the, the late seventies, early eighties where soccer was, became a real big thing in the, in the U S and then kind of petered out. But in Canada, we, the, uh, Canadian soccer league was formed. So we were able to uh, play for the now is now defunct, but the Hamilton Steelers. So I was able to play for three, four years there before I, I went to teacher's college and then the real world uh, came knocking. But um, to answer the question, okay, and th that's the background. It's really helped because it, it gave me um, kind of, kind of a, a, like a realistic view of what it takes to play at the next level, you know, and, uh, and it's not easy. So um, even in scouting and in addressing players and knowing what buttons to push and all that sort of thing, it, it, it's really, really helped out. Also, obviously, uh, I still keep in touch with a lot of the players and, and who now have, who are now running a lot of these programs, these high-end programs. So it, it gives me a real nice network to help out and, and continue to grow, right? Because uh, to think that I know everything about uh, anything is, 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 as you know, is, pretty, is untrue. So I'm always willing to learn and, and have conversations with the next person. So it, it, it's all, it, every day is a learning experience for me and for, uh, for particularly for this sport, which, uh, has changed and, and it's great to be part of uh, kind of a next level or university sport at this time in Canada, because uh, again, as you know, soccer in Canada now is taken completely taken off. The women this past summer won a gold medal uh, in the Olympics and the men now are on the verge, hopefully of uh, qualifying for the next uh, world cup. And then in four years from there, five actually, but uh, we'll be hosting co-hosting the world cup. So, there's a lot of great things going on. There's a huge game between Canada and the U.S. coming up uh, in January, on January 30th in kind of my adopted hometown, Hamilton, which uh, we're looking forward to. And, and as a matter of fact, just this past week, a, a lot of our alumni from those old teams are looking to get together and re rekindle some old friendships. So I'm really looking forward to that. That's so, that's so amazing. What was it like, obviously, getting the opportunity to coach at your alma mater, Brooks? Okay, so uh, I actually did not go to Brock. I went to McMaster, and but my but Brock was always kind of my home community university in Niagara. So I'm a, a, a born and bred Niagara guy, and I moved back and I taught again. I taught 31 years here, so uh, and we've done a lot of great work through Brock. Even when I was teaching, uh, Brock students would come in all the time. They'd either volunteer, you'd get teachers in there. They have this uh, what's called a Med Plus program, so some of their players would come in or students would come in and work um, with our leadership program. So there's always that connect. And also, aside from being a soccer coach, I coached football uh, in my younger years, um, which, which I loved. And I also coached uh, basketball right up to a couple of years ago, which, you know, I love both, um, both those sports. And my, my, my current players laugh because I also coach a little bit of hockey, but I'm a Canadian, but I can't skate. So I coach some women's hockey. Uh, so sports are sports, but they would always say, come on on the ice and be like, nah, my ankles can't take it. But I mean, it, it, it's, it's, it's something that, uh, uh, you know, back again to the Brock thing, you know, Brock also, there's a great connection with the basketball because their, uh, their women's uh, head coach, Mike Rayo is uh, did a lot of work with in the community. 
and, and, and drew a lot of the uh, community and high school teams in. So there's that connect there. So being, being part of it now is almost like, you know, it's like visiting an old friend, which is awesome. What was it like, obviously, when you first became the head coach of the women's soccer team? That is an experience that uh, I thought that I, I, that I would, you know, I, that I'd move into seamlessly, but it was much more of a challenge than I thought it would be. Because being a head, it, it's part, part of being a head coach is, you know, you're, you're, you're part of everything, right? So, and there are a lot of moving parts from obviously, the, which are most important thing, which is the academics, making sure that that's all in place for the, for the players and making sure that our players are, you know, there is a, we have, we've got a great um, tutoring program for the first year players, making sure that they're all going to that and checking their marks and all that. And then of course, you know, we have what's called the uh, BSP, which are our Brock Sports um, uh, Performance, which takes care of our training, and they're all hands on. So, you know, you have to coordinate with them, and also our Brock Sports Medicine, and then of course there's the the training and the day to day things, and making sure your assistant coaches are all on the same page, and making sure all of the uh, players are, uh, you know on the same, on the same page and in tune with what it is that you were doing, which was my number one goal. So I, it became very apparent that this team was inexperienced and raw. So, um, you know, there's two main kind of, I mean, there's a million, but there's two main philosophies we were looking at, obviously the coaching and the tactical part, uh, but also the teaching aspect. So we put on our, our, our coaching staff put on the uh, teaching half for most of the season and you know I actually the first thing that I did I'll tell you right now the first thing and I have one right here the first thing I did with these guys was I gave them uh I said hi you all know me but I gave them their own book and I said you will at the end of every training session take five minutes whatever it takes and I want you to jot down all the things that you've learned and and they were and they come up come up come up so that was all part of it so there's a lot of energy and uh, enthusiasm and all, there's all kinds of things that go into that, but it was to answer that question. It was a lot more of a challenge than I thought it would be on the surface, but by the same token, it was uh, to me anyways, it, it was just uh, a remarkable experience too. And I've, I've, I've learned from the players and from everybody around me. No question. What are yeah. some things that you have accomplished as head coach? Okay, well, the number one thing I want to say that I've, I've um, accomplished, and I said, when, when I stepped in and we had um, a conversation with uh, our, our, our sports soccer lead, which was David Valesco, as well as our uh, athletic director, Melissa Kerr said, okay, here's, here's the number one thing, knowing it was a difficult situation because there are new, new faces. Uh, a lot of our, you know, uh, ingrained leaders had left via graduation. Um, so I, the number one thing we wanted to accomplish was we wanted to, and I know everybody says this, but we wanted to truly create a team environment, one or a family environment, one where the players really wanted to show up and really wanted to learn, and really wanted to, to be there and genuinely support each other. Like I wanted to eliminate any uh, cattiness or nonsense that might exist or maybe, um, you know, had the potential, not necessarily here, but, you know, we've all heard of it and seen it. You know, I, I've certainly been involved as long as I have, you know, seen it in, in all levels of sport, right? Male, female, and otherwise, like it's just there. So I, that was number one. And I, I, I can honestly say that that was something that um, really was uh, something I'm, I'm, I'm proud of. And, you know, I can give you an example for, uh, so we, 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 <laughs> we had one of our quote unquote imports we, uh, is a, is a wonderful young woman named, uh, Luisa Argento, who comes from Brazil. And she actually was recruited just prior to the pandemic time. So 2019 into 2020. So she's a second year player, but year one experience. She didn't obviously get to play that first year. And I, I you know, I, I, I met her numerous times over Zoom and FaceTime with, again, with Luch. But, uh, you know, she came in and she was really, really excited. She actually moved here uh, in 2020 when the school, like obviously the, the main school was closed, hoping against hope that there would be some sort of training. 
And the one day we got together in December uh, of last year, we were, I just joking with her this, this past week, we got together, she left that morning and I had never met her face to face. So I showed up to train and go, where is she? And then everybody said, no, she got on a plane this morning. That was it. She had to go back. So anyway, so she came in and uh, she lives in residence, but it's a, it's a, it, it's a bit of a, a hike to get there. So her parents bought her a bicycle uh, so she could easily get to training. Uh, probably within 24 hours of her, them purchasing the bike, the bike was, was stolen. So, uh, she, <laughs> she came in and she was completely gutted. You know, somebody broke the lock, stole the bike and she was upset. Now, unbeknownst to me, the players on their own accord, uh, chipped in and within less than a day, bought her a new bike, uh, a horn, uh, state of the art lock, and then presented it to her that practice you know what i mean and one of the girls works at a sports store so it's, it's, she got a, a great deal but i got to me and that was about a month into the season to me that just best exemplifies you know everything that you're as a coach uh is that what you're striving for because it does at that point it's bigger than the game it's bigger than the sports and a small example and as recently brandon his last evening the players chipped in one of our players has a situation back home um, and, and the players kicked in to help out. And it's like, it's like hit a button and these guys are getting thrown into action. And that to me is my number one thing I'm a proud of proud of on the field. I think we really, um, uh, despite maybe not having the wins and losses that we have, we did, we were in every single game and defensively, I think the players really made a lot of strides. And we were discussing this. We're now in, you know, in, in the process of having what's called exit talks. So we, each player sits down with the coaching staff and we give them a series of questions. Uh, a lot of it's geared towards us. So we become better people, better human beings and better coaches. But um, when we talk to them, we said, listen, uh, be proud of yourself because you're a better player now than you were when I first, we first met you in August. There's no question. These players put in, Lots of time between, you know, being on field. And since the season ended, we've been outside. And I can tell you right now, we're at where we live, there's a lot of the white stuff on the ground. These guys have been outside five days a week on top of their workouts since the, for, for basically three weeks. We're going to wrap it up this, uh, not this Saturday. Uh, uh, yeah, I guess, yeah, this Saturday will be the end because the students will be entering exams. But um, again, they're working hard and they know, you know what, the minute that, Whistle ended la, uh, at the last game of the season. These these ladies are are they're they're getting ready for next season. That's so amazing. Who are some of the teams as you play in your conference? So in our conference, uh, what happened this year was they reconfigured the conference to adjust for obviously the COVID situation. So they created what is known as um, I guess kind of they bubbled us. So. We would play with the, so there were five other teams, and you would play them home and home. So in our situation, because we don't have a football team, we're the only team in our conference that doesn't have a, a football team. We would end up playing Friday and Sunday. So uh, the teams are you. So Western, who ended up, I guess, coming out of our conference, and then ended up finalists in the uh, uh, finalists in the Ontario Championship, and then went on to represent at the Canadian Championships out in Cape Breton. So you had Western. University of Guelph, uh, and then you have Waterloo, Laurier, and Windsor. So those are the those are the five, and they're all very good teams. They're all very well coached. So there was very little wiggle room. So what happened was uh, the top two teams would come out right, and then what would happen after that is there were three divisions, and then there were two wild card spots. So we knew going in and I know again all the co all the coaches we all communicate and we knew going into the season that there was going to be uh, very little chance that one of the wild cards were going to come out because every game was close and everybody was kind of beating each other on any given Friday or Sunday. What is a typical soccer game like for you? Uh, so uh, this is something else that I, I w really was an eye-opener having coached again I told you at all levels even recently uh, and knowing the, the, so here in Ontario, we have what's called uh, probably the highest level you could 
play at outside of your university is what's called League One or League One Reserves, which is, it's not really semi-pro, but it's qualified as that. Uh, and then kind of on a parallel is, is the Ontario Women's Soccer League. Okay, so a lot of uh, NCAA players and uh, uh, U sport players do end a college, of course, end up in Canadian college, end up playing in any of those two competitions. So I am... Um, I work frequently with both of those programs, but the one thing particularly in what we play in the OUA West is it is a fast, competitive, physical game. Uh, the players, and I tell we're now we're deep, knee deep in recruit season. And I tell the players, um, if, if you're not willing to um, play with, with these three things that I just mentioned, you're going to struggle because you have very little time on the ball. And often, uh, oftentimes the players in this league will leave a calling card. So, you know, you may make a pass and then they may stick their foot in and let you know they were there, right? It's a really physical game. So, and, and they have to be ready. Uh, that's why we spend a lot of time in the weight room. We spend a lot of time working on conditioning because if they're not ready, it's really, really difficult to survive in this, uh, this league. It is, it's fast. What is the recruitment process like for prospective student athletes looking to play college soccer? Uh, so basically, uh, it, again, this path, we're now kind of just tiptoeing out of the COVID restrictions. So U sports uh, for the past year and a half or so, maybe a little longer, uh, created, an, uh, uh, oh, there was no in-person recruiting. So that is, even once um, they, some of these, they call them showcases or some of the leagues started to get back into, into action, we would have to either... Uh, have live feeds or rely specifically on word of mouth slash player resume slash video. So the entire coaching staff is, is these players would come in and they would submit their links and their, their videos and we'd watch. And then uh, if, if something would tweak us, then we would go the next step, which would be usually a zoom uh, teams or FaceTime call now with the in-person. So that, so for example, uh, I'll give you an example of my past just this past weekend. So uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, there was a, a, a showcase that is the players, players go in and they, they all college coaches are, are invited or university from the U S and Canada. Um, and so in you go and you, you watch and you uh, take notes. So you usually get an invite via the player with links. Um, and then you go and you watch if somebody stands out, then you reach out, but usually the player themselves will reach out to you. So our process is, if we like what we're seeing, I'll establish a FaceTime call or like a face-to-face -face, uh, uh, call, call similar to what we're doing right here, and just get a vibe. And I, I, I try to tell them exactly, uh, give them kind of paint a picture of what it's like, um, what we're looking for, and, if, and then I let them digest that information. You know, a lot of them at times have their, you know, their parents or guardians are part of that call too. Um, and then the next step would be a, a visit or a visitation. So they'll come in. So when they come in, I'll, I'll, I'll kind of go over the, obviously the soccer end of it, the sports end of it. But then we have uh, active players on the active roster that will then meet them and then take them for a tour, uh, which includes obviously the soccer facilities, dining halls, uh, residents, and then into the main school. And then you, uh, it, it's really neat because I say, look, I'll see you in whatever, 30 minutes. And oftentimes I'm sitting there and I have to text them, say, get back. I'm, I'm freezing here or whatever's going on because there, there's usually a bit of a connect. If these players uh, then continue, they say, you know what? I really like what I'm seeing. Then we'll work them out or we'll get them into a recruit day uh, and then really see what they're like. And then from that point on, we, 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 we look at, uh, if it's a fit on both ends, we look at a uh, uh, letter of intent, which then would, um, again, it's not 100% binding, but it, 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 it kind of links them with your school. And then you move on to the next athlete, right? We have, we have obviously, um, uh, we have voids. In, in, we, we have needs as a team in, in, with respect to our lineup. But we're looking at, and I tell them, we want good people. We want good human beings in our program, because if you have good people around you, good things are going to happen. And, and, and that, that's, that's our philosophy, the Brock women's and men's soccer program. 
course, on the official visit, when the prospective student athlete is there, do they get to try on the jersey and see, obviously, if that Brock jersey is going to be their fit for the next four to five years? Uh, you know what? I, actually, that, that's a great question and maybe something we've – I never thought about that. But um, even once they sign the letter of intent, it, it's it's not a U sport or a, a OUA sport rule, but it's, it's a Brock – uh, kind of policy that we don't kind of make a splash or, 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 or kind of advertise these players until they have accepted the official acceptance from the school. Does that make sense? So they'll apply for a program. They'll get in. They accept once. As soon as they accept, then we'll say, here you go. Boom. And I, you know, it, looking at that, I think it's a really smart rule because um, you know, Players may, may have a change of heart. Things can happen, right? And if you make a huge splash, look, we've, we've recruited uh, or, or we've signed this, you know, 30 goal, a season striker, look at us. And then they decide to go somewhere else or they don't decide to come at all. It just, it saves that kind of, uh, it, 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 it's not embarrassing, but a bit of egg on the face for both the athlete and yourself. So we wait, we're patient with it, but that, but having them try it out might not be a bad, I, mean, I think Brandon, I might use that because it might, Give them the fit, especially if somebody's pretty special. I got a few coming this Thursday. Maybe I'll maybe I'll go. That's not a bad idea. That's wonderful. What advice would you give prospective student athletes looking to play college soccer? Sorry. What advice would you give prospective student athletes looking to play college soccer? Oh, okay. So I would say to them, and and, and it's funny because again, through the okay. through the pandemic, both Luch and I, uh, it started off just as something that somebody had asked, but now we will do zoom calls with clubs, with specific teams. And part of that is we do give the advice to, to the athletes. And I would say to all of them, the number one thing you need to do is even beginning in grade, grade nine or early on begin to create a sports resume. That is uh, it's a, no different than a job resume, but a sports resume, which includes, which, which when I look at it as a coach, it, it just, it, it provides a snapshot or paints a picture of who you are as an athlete. So for example, a lot of players I know in soccer, they just seem to zero in on uh, the sport. You know, I played here, I scored this many goals, many assists, and this coach loves me, that coach, which is, which is wonderful. However, did you do anything in your school? Were you involved in any volunteer work? Did you play other sports? Did you win any awards? You know what I mean? Um, so, so that would be number one. And, and, and also including that, yeah, include your references from, from different coaches. The second part of that is begin to compile a video library, which is clear and it's concise. And, you know, you don't have to spend a lot of money. You don't have to necessarily even go to these agencies. You can do it on your own or get, bring it into school. And I'm sure so I'm 100% certain that in school, they can edit this. So you say, okay, uh, here I am. I play, let's say I play defense and I don't score a lot of goals, but I make a lot of great plays. So as soon as that video, the snippet begins, maybe have an arrow pointing at yourself or circle it or uh, brighten it out or focus on you and show the, show, show the variety of different plays. And it can't, uh, these videos can't always specifically focus on one thing it should show you as a complete player it's great that you scored goals but do you work both sides of the field that is you know when your team loses possession of the ball you're going to work hard defensively and get back so show a bit of that uh, if you're a back or a midfielder same thing show your ability to pass show your ability to your, your aerial game your physical part of that game etc cetera, etc cetera. so uh that would be kind of building your uh I guess your own catalog. Okay. The next step would be figure out what schools it, it is that you want to go to. Some people just splash say, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to throw all this and hopefully some of it sticks, right? Being in living in Southern Ontario, I'm a big Buffalo bills fan. And we all follow the story of Josh Allen who, you know, didn't get recruited. I believe the story went and then went to a community college and he did that. He threw out, everything he could to, uh, you know, 200 plus schools. And he finally got one school that, that bit. And then, you know, the rest is history for him. And so does that work? I guess to an extent, but I think in this situation, 
figure out what schools you want to go to, learn about them, okay? And then be you you as an athlete have to be more personal with the coach. So say, uh, good morning, coach, deep school. I check the spelling, okay? And and we all know you're sending a bunch of these out, but make sure you you send, you know, don't don't say Good morning, Coach Team Squally. I've always been interested in Sir Wilfred Laurier University or Lord, where I'm like, I'm at Brock. So make sure that everything, everything's good because we do see a lot of these. Introduce yourself, include all of those, um, the, the, include all those pieces of information that I just mentioned, but also say, I'm interested in this program in your school. Okay, because that lets me know that you're indeed, yeah, you know what, you are interested. Okay, now, because that's probably first contact. A lot of players spend a lot of money getting, I, I'm gonna call them agents or using yeah. agencies. So if we get second or third party information, it makes it tough for us, right? The other thing is try and keep mom and dad out of the initial uh, contact. Cause we do get the odd one from mom, dad, uncle, grandpa, who went to Brock, whatever that like, we want you to advocate for yourself, right? We want you as a player because we want, we, we there has to be a certain, uh, <laughs> there has to be a certain independence because it is a huge step. You're, a lot of them are leaving home. A lot of them are, there's a lot going on, especially that first year. So we want to make sure that you indeed are going to be, you know, dialed in for, 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 for the challenges that are ahead. So these are the things that we look at. So again, just to review, Make sure that to set up that resume, set up that, uh, and again, it's not too early, you know, by, by usually here, by grade, end of grade 10, grade 11, maybe start to reach out to schools, you know, um, and then get that, that video library ready to go. And then, and then off you go. And then if you are playing in the local area, then invite the coach to come and watch because that face to face, like that is really, really important because I want to, I want to know what these people are like in the latter stages of recruitment. I always want to meet their parents. Okay. So, uh, because I want to see how they, how they interact with their parents too, because a lot, cause you're going to be kind of a, you know, I'll be like a father or uncle or whatever I am, but the, the big brother days are gone, but, but to them when they're gone, so they're, they're going to lean on you. So I want to see how they react with, with, with their family, their important family members. I, I, I forgot to mention as part of that, kind of recruiting portal. I did start to see a couple of interesting um, bits of video where the player, prior to even showing their, their video about their sport, uh, they just, like this, they just say, hi, my name is John Pasquale. I play center back, and they introduce themselves, and they talk about, you know, I, I love riding horses, blah, 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 blah. So tell them, you know, I have two brothers, sisters, one does this and that, and then explain themselves prior to getting into the video. I think that's kind of neat, too, because it's personal. And uh, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I like that. That's so amazing. What advice would you give future college coaches looking to get into the industry? The first thing you definitely want to do is get into any, all coaches are looking for uh, volunteer coaches who are willing to put in the time. So, uh, and it is a lot of time. So that would be your number one uh 100 your number one um i think tool because it's it works both ways you're 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 obviously lending uh a hand to college coaches plus you're figuring out like is this for me is this what i want to do um so so you would get your number one you get your feet wet you get your experience you start you're building your resume number two which is a big one you're networking because whenever i go anywhere if, if I have volunteer coaches and I have a, we, we have a couple right now that are unbelievable. Uh, and, and you know, one of them came with me this weekend. And the first thing I do when I see all of my peers and as I introduce them and then there you go. So then they know them say, this is, you know, you saw him on the sideline, he's putting in the time. So let's say down the road, he wants to go work at one of those other schools or colleges. He's there. And, and, you know, a head coach might say, yeah, that's a good idea. The other thing is, uh, look to maybe build your, your um, coaching credentials in terms of any, any courses. Uh, yeah. Build a, build up your own coaching resume that way. Get involved in community sports too, uh, particularly anything linked maybe with the university itself. I think that's a good idea as well. Uh, but it's, it, you're never too, too young to get involved in, in this, uh, but we need help. All coaches need help at all levels, whether it's statisticians, 
people coming in and working out with, with helping out with the equipment, people helping out with um, just just the day to day tasks. Obviously, the recruiting process because that's a different uh, kettle of fish too when you're looking at the recruitment process, and it's something that um, you, you know you you get better at as you just with experience, right? And everybody has their own personality. And I mean, I learned, I, I learned my most the re recruiting process, watching my own three daughters go through uh, the recruiting process. Cause we kind of, my wife and I sat back and listened to the coaches and listened to them. All three were great basketball and soccer players. And it, it, it was interesting. Some of the coaches were really great at it. And some of them left a lot to be desired. Right. So I didn't know if I'd be good at it or not, but I knew what I wouldn't do just from basically seeing some of the mistakes, some of these other uh, people made. And, and, you know, we're not perfect, but there, 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 there's a way to go about this and not go about it, but there's all kinds of ways to get involved. I, I, I would say in terms of the coaching, begin with a volunteer position, get good at it. And like anything else, work your way up that, that ladder. If you look at the greatest coaches of all time, they all started somewhere. None of them started at the very top. You know, so there you go. That's great advice. Where can my listeners find you at on social media along with the Brock's soccer program app? Uh, our soccer program, uh, if, if you, again, if you if you do any search of Brock Women's Soccer um, on Instagram, uh, we do have, it, we're, we're, we're largely on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, our, our Brock Athletics, okay, our, it's called uh, Badgers or Gold Badgers. You'd find them there. And then myself is Coach John, at Coach John 55, uh, Twitter and Instagram. Thank you again, Coach John, for your interview. And best of luck in your future with the Brock's soccer program. My pleasure, Brandon. And uh, best of luck. I know you're busy in this uh, upcoming holiday season with uh, a lot on your your table there. So uh, thanks a lot. And uh, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was an honor to be here. Take care. Thank you. You can find Brandon Sports Talk on Facebook at Brandon Sports Talk, Instagram at Brandon Sports Talk, Twitter at Talk underscore Brandon, and you can find me on YouTube at Brandon Sports Talk. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you again, Coach Sean, for your interview and best of luck in the future. Thank you. Take care. You've been watching Brandon Sports Talk. Please feel free to like, share, and subscribe to Brandon Sports Talk on social media and on YouTube.